Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Banana Pi M20. This has a form factor of the same size as a Raspberry Pi Zero, 65 by 30 millimeters, but this board has got a quad-core processor. So let's go and take a closer look. So, here we have our Banana Pi M20, which comes in this generic Banana Pi box, but if we look on the back we're assured it's definitely a, an M20, it says it down there. And if you're wondering about the price of this board, this is one of the cheaper single board computers, but the price seems to vary a great deal. Uh, but I found in late February 2020, you could purchase it for $20.99 or £16.54. So, let's uh, open it up. I think it's very simple. We just uh, open the box like that, and all uh, we are, anti-static bag, which is uh, sealed. So we'll bring in uh, Mr. Scissors to get in inside here. There we are, cut into the, the bag. And uh, here we have our uh, tiny little uh, 35 gram computer, which is based, as you can see, on an all-winner H2 Plus system on a chip which contains four ARM Cortex-A7 CPU cores running at up to 1.2 GHz and an ARM Mali 400 MP2 GPU running at 600 MHz. Located next to the system on the chip, just here we have a RAM chip. This is a 512 MB of DDR3 RAM. And then along here we have a wireless module which provides 802.11 BG and N Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0. Next to that, here we've got our micro SD card slot. This slot supports a card up to 64 gigabytes in size. And then at the other end of the board, we find a CSI or camera serial interface connector into which you can plug a Raspberry Pi compatible camera. In terms of other connectivity on this long edge, we find a mini, not a micro, a mini HDMI connector supporting up to 1080p video at up to 60 frames a second. And then over here, there is a micro USB port for power and another micro USB 2 port for connecting peripherals. And this also has OTG capabilities. Also on this edge, just between these, we find buttons, a reset button and a power button, which is a rather nice. And we've also got a connector here for an antenna if you want to extend the range of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Finally, the last connectivity I've not mentioned are the pads on the top of the board, 40 pads here where you could fit a Raspberry Pi compatible GPIO connector if you wish. You could fit, for example, a header like this. This is one of the nice ones with the, the colors on the pins, but you could uh, solder in a connector here to do all kinds of GPIO work with this board. And uh, finally, we'll flick the thing over to see if there's anything exciting on the back. There isn't, there's just this sticker which stopped me pushing this through the board a second ago. But other than that, nothing to write home about on the bottom of the board. So let's uh, flick our Banana Pi M20 back the right way. Before we test out the Banana Pi M20, I thought it would be a good idea to put it in the context of its most obvious competition, which as far as I'm concerned are the Raspberry Pi Zero W, which clearly has the same form factor, and the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus, which is physically twice the size. And the Banana Pi M20 is very much between these two Pis in terms of price and actual power. In terms of price, the best prices I can find online at the moment for the Raspberry Pi Zero W are about $10 or £9.30, whereas the Banana Pi M20 costs about $20.99 or £16.54, and the Pi 3A Plus costs about $25 or £23.40. In terms of the processors, the Raspberry Pi Zero W has got a single core 1 GHz processor, whereas if we look at the Banana Pi M20, we've got a 1.2 GHz quad-core processor, and on the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus, we've got 1.4 GHz quad-core processor. So the power goes up here as the price goes up. But other than that, the boards are very similar. They've all got 512 MB of RAM. They've all got micro USB power. They've all got one USB 2 port for connecting peripherals. They've all got an HDMI port up to 1080p video. They've all got a camera connector. They've all got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on board. The only real difference is is that you've got the GPIO connector pre-soldered onto the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus, and it's got the 3.5mm uh, jack for uh, audio out and composite video out. Oh, and it's also got a display connector. 
But other than that, very similar boards you might want to use in projects. So what I'm going to do now is to take the M20 and connect it up, get it running, try out a few operating systems, and then I'll do some comparative performance tests with these other two boards. Right, as you can see, I've now got the Banana Pi M20 all connected up and running, and I'm using a, a hub, as you can see here, to connect in my mouse and keyboard because I've got the one USB port. And right now, we're booting into Armbian. And I've been trying various operating systems because there's lots of images available for this board, but not many of them seem to work, at least for me. I've tried several versions of Android, couldn't get into those, but I have successfully installed Arbion 5.41, running the command line interface, and got it online, and uh, that's told me several things, at least this board runs uh, rather hot. Anyway, here we're arriving in uh, Arbion, also 5.41, but with a Ubuntu Xenial desktop. And uh, it works, as you can see, which is uh, rather good. The only uh, problem I've got here is this is running in 720p, and whatever I do, I can't get it to run in any other resolution other than the 720p 60 frames a second. And I've been through all the configuration tools for Arbion and all that sort of stuff, and that's, that's the only options I've got. If I go into uh, here, into settings, and to uh, where are we, display settings is uh, there. Uh, I just don't have other options available, and I've been trying to go through config files and things, but I'm afraid just uh, can't be done. But never mind, I'm still running Armbian here on the uh, Banana Pi M20. And uh, we can go to things like uh, Word Processor, it's coming up here, there we are, we've got LibreOffice Writer, we're always going to bring up Word Processor. I know many of you be saying, why would you run a Word Processor on a half gig RAM single board computer? Because I want to, it's something I always want to do, so it'll come up, and there we are, we can print uh, hello, or type hello, and put it into the uh, obligatory very large letters, which of course uh, I think is the law in a test of a computer. There we are, nice big hello there, that's absolutely fine. And uh, we could also, no, we won't save that, I think the world can lose that. Uh, we can go to uh, uh, the internet here, we've got uh, the Chromium browser, which works perfectly well, I think. Hopefully it'll come up in a second. Oh, is it going to come up? It's exciting, isn't it? Yes, it's getting there. And we can hopefully go to the world's uh, favourite website, will that work? Yes, we can get to explaining computers here in Armbian. But I'd like to try out some other operating systems as well, so I think now what I'm going to do is to close things down, fit a heat sink to the board, and to try out Raspbian. Greetings, here I am back again. I've now fitted a heat sink onto the Banana Pi M20. It's going to need it given what I'm about to do to this poor little board. And uh, we're now booting into a uh, Raspbian. And do note the size of the text on screen here, or indeed the text that's just uh, disappeared off the screen, because that text was at a uh, 1080p, and we've now got text coming back on the screen, which is clearly not at a 1080p, we're back to 720p. We've got the four little penguins there to show we've got a quad-core processor, that's very good. And uh, if we wait a second, if we speed forward, we'll arrive in Raspbian. And uh, here we are, we've arrived in Raspbian, but we are back in 720p, which annoys me. I've actually tried very hard to get this board running at uh, 1080p, and I've only managed it for the start of the boot process. But if I show you here, we'll just go into a terminal. I'm just going to go, uh, I think, like uh, that. Let's run up uh, idle. I've been uh, editing the uh, config.txt uh, file here in idle. I just like doing it in idle. I could use anything else, but I happen to like idle. We just bring it up on the screen there and go down a bit. You'll see my frame buffer is set to a 1920-1080, and more significantly, I've set my HDMI group to a group 1, which is CEA, and a mode 31, which should be a 1080p 50 frames a second. But it makes no difference at all. Unfortunately, if we uh, look here under preferences and uh, Raspberry Pi configuration, we should be able to go into uh, resolution setting, we can't go into resolution setting, it's not there. So unfortunately, for me at least, the Banana Pi M20 is a 720p board. This said, it's running very nicely in Raspbian. Everything is here, it's nice and responsive. We can go into the uh, uh, task manager there. You can see it's running along, not taking up too much of its half gig of memory just for running Raspbian, so that's uh, pretty nice. And uh, we can do all the normal things. We've even got uh, Minecraft here if you particularly want to use Minecraft here on this board. 
and that we can get to the internet, we can run up a browser again, very much the same as we saw in uh, Ambien a few minutes ago, not that any different. It takes a little while to run up Chromium, but it's quite a reasonably large program for this poor little board to run up, but it'll do it, I'm sure. Will it get there? Yes, it will, and we can hopefully go to the world's favorite website, and will that work? Yes, so we can do browsing and that type of stuff, and that, as you would expect. But uh, the thing I really want to do here is to test out this board relative to the uh, other two boards we looked at a second ago, the Raspberry Pi Zero W and the Raspberry Pi 3A+. And so what we're going to do, you might have noticed it a second ago, I'm first of all going to just clear this display because I like to do that. And I've got sitting in the buffer there, there it is, a sysbench command. I've installed sysbench on this machine and it's going to factor prime numbers up to a value of 10,000, which could be enough to give us a reasonable test. And you'll see it's set to num threads equal four because this is a quad core processor. So let's kick this thing off. I would note that uh, this board, when you install Sysbench, installs an early version, uh, 0.4.12, as we can see there. That's significant because this version of Sysbench, the earlier version, will run for the full 10,000 factoring of prime numbers and see how long it takes. Whereas later versions of Sysbench, as we've discovered in other videos, run for a set time and then tell you what's happened in the time. But on this particular version of Sysbench, which we run on all the boards we're testing, we'll see how long it takes to factor up to 10,000 and we'll get some comparable time figures. Normally I go into a fast forward mode at this point, but it can't take that long to finish, I wouldn't imagine. So let's sit here and be very excited about what it's going to do, what result is going to come up. Let's just move the window around whilst we're doing it. So we'll put that up there. Come on, little board, you can get there. It's probably getting very hot. Yes, I've just touched this heatsink. It is getting slightly hot, but uh, never mind. Hopefully in a second, it'll give us a result. I once threatened to learn to play the harmonica to cover moments like this when things were not happening, but oh, oh, there we are. We've got a result. What is it? It's 62.5 seconds it's taken to factor uh, prime numbers up to a value of 10,000. And uh, you might be thinking, what's the relevance of that number? Well, of course, we need to have something comparable. And uh, earlier, I ran this on the Raspberry Pi Zero W, and it took quite a while. This is a single core board, so I actually used the command just for one thread, and it gave us a result of 230.6 seconds. So it is the case that the Banana Pi M20 is about four times faster, at least running this Sysbench test, than Raspberry Pi 0W. I also did a test using the Raspberry Pi 3A+, and that completed the Sysbench test in 29.9 seconds, so significantly faster. So there we are. We've got some comparable numbers showing us the relative performance of the Banana Pi M20, the Raspberry Pi 0W, and the Raspberry Pi 3A+. The Banana Pi M20 is a low-cost single-board computer that packs more processor power than the Raspberry Pi Zero W into the same very small form factor. This said, software support for this board is not what it could be, it's not as good as it is for the Raspberry Pi models, and therefore, unless you need a low-cost board with this much power in this form factor, I would suggest you probably should consider buying a Raspberry Pi Zero W or a Raspberry Pi 3A+. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.